Hello viewers, we welcome you in the name of the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ to another edition of the program Midday Prayer coming to you from Advent Cable Network Nigeria Television, ACNN TV. It is our sincere prayers that as we fellowship together this time, the Lord God will bless us mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray together? You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia, the Lord reigns, let the earth tremble. The Lord reigneth, let the earth tremble. The Lord reigneth, let the earth tremble. The Lord reigneth, let the earth tremble. Our God reigneth, let the earth tremble. Our God reigneth, let the earth tremble. The Lord reigneth, let the earth Tremble, the Lord reigns. Let the earth tremble. We sing it, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna. Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna. Heavenly Father, we worship you. Great and mighty Redeemer, we adore you. The sanctifier of our soul, we praise you. We honor you for this moment in your presence to worship you, to adore you, to praise you, to exalt and magnify your holy name. For there is none like you. Because we have no other God beside you except you that you are the king of glory. You that you are the rock of ages. We beseech you, O Lord, that as we come together in your presence this hour, that you will incline your ears to us. Lord, you will listen to us. You will receive our worship. Lord, even as we look into your word together, we ask for acts of understanding from you that you will grant unto us in the name of Jesus. 
We pray that your word that we hear this hour will bring rest to our soul. Will bring deliverance to us. Lord, every body that may be in the hearts of anyone, Lord, let them be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because we know that you have heard us. Blessed be your great and mighty name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, beloved. Once again, we welcome you warmly in the name of God. We want to continue with the series we have been looking at, The Power of Praise. And today, we want to continue with it and look at what happens when we praise God. When we praise God, what happens? Our tests are taken from Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 26. I read, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. I'd like us to look at Psalm number 22, verses 3 to 5. Psalm 22, verses 3 through 5. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and you were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Beloved, we have said before now that one of the reasons God created us is to praise him. And we have established the fact that when we praise God, we need to praise God in the beauty of holiness. This time we are looking at the word of God from Psalm 22. Verse 3, the Bible says, God is holy and is enthroned in the praises of Israel. Whenever a believer wants God to move in a situation, what is right for such believer to do is to offer undiluted praises. To the king of glory. When you want God to move in an unimaginable way, in a way that he has not moved before, when you want God to do what he has not done for you before, what is apt for you to do is to cook the food of the sacrifice of praise, of a praise that you know that even this praise, God will enthrone this praise. God will inhabit this praise. And you offer it to God. You know, when you praise God, one thing that you are doing when you begin to clap, you begin to sing, you begin to adore the King of Glory, one thing that you are doing is that you are creating a comfortable environment, an enabling environment for God to move, for God to act, for God to perform his wonders. And whenever God appears to a man, ah, beloved, God does not appear to do small things. He appears to do great things. He appears to manifest his glory. He appears to show forth who he is. And this is exactly what Paul and Silas did while in prison at Philippi. We 
read that you know before now, you no know, Paul and Silas and you know their team of evangelists. You know Luke was there too, the one that wrote you know the Acts of Apostles, and they went to Philippi to preach the word of God, and they saw a young lady, you know, in whom was the spirit of divination. And you know the story, you know, they cast the prison out and before you know it, you know, they, they were thrown into prison. And Paul and Silas, the Bible says, they were beaten, thoroughly beaten. They were scorched. They were dealt with. But they did something. They created an enabling environment for God to move, for God to act. You know, many are times when we pray, we see that God can decide to send an angel. In fact, you don't need more than one angel to see the act of God. God can send an angel to you. We saw that in the book of Acts chapter 12, when the church was praying for the release of Peter the apostle. God sent an angel to bring out Peter, and the church said, you know that it was Peter. But in this case, in Acts chapter 16, it's a different story. The Bible says, you know, the foundations of the prison were shaking. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. You know, this is God rising, you know, by himself. We see God coming down to that prison where his servants, Paul and Silas, were kept to do what he has not done before. In fact, it was such a wonderful miracle that Instead of Paul and Silas to run, our other prisoners, they sat there in the prison because they have seen the work of God. I pray for you that in this season you will see the act of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So, beloved, what happens when we praise God? We are going to consider a few things. Number one, when we praise God, we enforce the rule of God in our situations. Since God inhabits the praises, anytime you praise God, you know, we know that God lives inside praise. Now there in the live. You know, you enthrone the praise of God. You enthrone the reign of God. You enthrone the majesty of God. You enthrone the power of God over any situation. And that is one thing that we do when we praise God. When you, get, when you are in a difficult time or you are in a difficult terrain and you begin to offer praise to the King of glory, you are enforcing the rule of God in that situation. Number two, what happens when we praise God? Chains are broken when we praise God. You know, chain represents... Anything that is bringing stagnation, sorrow, and sadness to a child of God. Chain is, you know, a symbol. It symbolizes whatever brings challenges, whatever brings stagnation, whatever makes you to stay on the same spot, you know, making you to run on the same spot. You are not making progress. Chain represents such a thing. And when we praise God, we see that chains are broken. We can see this in the story in Acts chapter 16. The Bible says, the doors of the prison were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone. The chains of Paul, the chains of Silas, and the chains of every prisoner that was in that prison. When we praise God, chains are broken. Chains are loosed. Number three, what happens when we praise God? When we praise God, God arises and his enemies flee at his presence. You know, when you are praising God, what you are doing is that you are making God to arise. You want God to move on your behalf. And you know that popular scripture, Psalm 68, Psalm 68 verse 1 says, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. He says, as smoke is driven away, so drive them away. 
as wax met before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Say, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. When you praise God, you cause God to arise. And you cause his... <laughs> when, when, when God arises, the enemies don't have option than to do what? Than to flee. They don't have a bargain. You know, there's nothing else for them to do in this matter than to flee at the appearance of God. And you know that God does not have any other enemy than the devil, his cohorts. And whoever is the enemy of his children are his enemy too. When you praise God, God arises and his enemies flee at his appearance. Number four, what happens when we praise God? When we praise God, we make every situation that is ugly to bow before us. Praises make every ugly situation to do what? To bow before us. We can see in that same Acts chapter 16, you know, when the jailer saw the mighty act of God, he came before Paul and he bowed down. He said, what must I do to be saved? Praises make the enemy and whatever situation that is ugly to bow before us. We also see this in Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. The Canaanite woman. The Bible tells us that, you know, Jesus was not willing to help her. You know, a daughter was demon-possessed. Is there any parent that we have a daughter that is demon-possessed? And you know that there is a place that there is a solution, you will not go there. The Canaanite woman, even though she was not a Jew, in fact, Mark tells us that she was uh, a Syrophoenician woman. But she came to God. She worshipped the Lord. The Bible says in verse 25, it says, And she worshipped him and said, Help me, Lord. And God gave her a miracle. As you praise God this season, every ugly situation in your life shall turn to testimony in the name of Jesus. Number five, when we praise God, we bring rest to our soul and calm every storm in our lives. Praises bring rest to our souls and it calms every storm in our lives. You know, when you look at the unforgettable encounter with God in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible says in verse 13, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 13, it says, Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. Look at the kind of rest that Paul and Silas had. Look at the kind of rest. People that had been beaten, people that had been scourged, people that had been bruised. And when God, they, they were praising God, and when God arose and fought on their behalf, they remained calm. They remained in the prison. They did not move. Imagine, you know, imagine the, 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 the controller general of uh, Nigerian Correction Service, you know, Nigerian prison, coming before you to bow. And he said, what must I do to be saved? Praises bring rest all around our soul. Praises calm storm in our lives. What happens when we praise God, number six? Praises bring about the increase and the blessings of God. Praises bring about the increase and the blessings of God. And I like these scriptures very well. Psalm 67, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 67, verses 5 and 6 says, Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the heart shall yield an increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. The heart will do what? The heart will yield an increase. Then God, our own God, shall bless us. But those people must do something first. Say, let the people praise you, O God. 
Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Psalm 67, verses 5 and 6. Beloved people of God, praises is the sacrifice that God wants to get from us. You know, if you are a good cook, you know how to cook very well. If, if, if you come from a part of the country, you know, we, we like to eat ikokore very well. And you can cook ikokore that has several spirits. And you put all the ingredients. My dear sister, my dear brother, you are the one that will eat it too. It is only praise that we can offer to God and God will receive. I pray that whatever ugly situation in your life, the Lord will turn them around in the name of Jesus. You know, I imagine that Paul and Silas were not just singing any house song. They were not just singing worldly songs. Look at what the Bible says in verse 25 of Acts chapter 16. Verse 25 of Acts chapter 16. He said, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were singing what? Hymns. Some of us that are of Anglican heritage, when last did you sing hymns on your own to God? They were singing hymns. Not just worldly songs. Have you ever seen where miracles happen where they are singing worldly songs? Some people, when you check their phones, their phones are full of worldly songs. But Paul and Silas, what were they doing? They were singing hymns to God. I pray that from today, when you sing hymns to God, your hymns will ascend the throne of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy treble bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like me is precious, sing. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. Can you go ahead and praise him? Oh, worship the King, oh, glorious above, oh, grateful is his power and his love, thy shield and defender, the ancient of this pavilion in splendor and guarded with praise. Praise him, praise him, praise. Praise Him, praise the everlasting King. We sing immortal, invisible, God only wise, enlightening, accessing. Buoyed from eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for accepting our worship. Thank you for charging us with your word yet again. Thank you because you make our worship acceptable unto you. Thank you because you have made us your true worshipers. Thank you because we worship you in spirit and in truth. Blessed be your holy name, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, viewers. We shall meet next time by the grace of the Lord. Remain blessed and rapturable. In Jesus' name, amen. Ash Wednesday, collect. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lent 4 Sentence God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Collect. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us faith to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.